Hi everyone, welcome back to Stories with A.G. Flitcher. So, in this conclusion of my first girlfriend, I will be telling you two moments, maybe more, of the relationship that inspired a couple scenes, and then one part of the relationship uh, that was a through line in one of the main characters' relationship, Boone, that uh, grew over time. So, first moment, let's say that this antler here is my girlfriend at the time. Uh, this was about halfway through the second go-around. I was at her house, I was about to leave, and we saw each other pretty much every day. So I thought it was okay to have space. You know, we don't have to be around each other 24-7, okay? So, this is, was one of her most needy moments I ever had to endure. I had my shoes on, I was uh, sitting on the front door steps, like inside of the house, and uh, I think I was in the foyer, and I said I love you, kissed her goodbye, and she, I think I was going down the stairs through the basement to uh, the front door there. I don't quite remember the layout of her house. It'd be kind of creepy if I did. <laughs> anyway, I just remember going down the stairs, and again, let's pretend this is her, and my back was turned to her, obviously, because I was about to leave, and I just feel someone behind me, and I'm taking the last step, and I feel, Whoa! So she's literally like this. She's on my back, putting all her weight on me. She wasn't heavy, but I just felt this, this jolting sensation. So her arm was like this on me, okay? Latched on, latched on to me, and she just didn't want to let go. So I'm walking out of the house, I'm dragging her, literally her feet are dragging on the ground as I'm going through the entire driveway, like that. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, talk about needy. Holy crap, this is like a new level of needy. So I'm walking and walking. She's still hanging on to me. I turn to my car. She's still on me. I'm still going. And I, you hear this the whole time. That's her. <laughs> That's her <laughs> not wanting to let go. So I put her down. I look her in the face, and I'm like, babe, I love you, but I see you every day. So you need to learn to know what space is, what boundaries are. We don't have to be around each other 24-7, okay? Just be okay with that. Now, she wasn't accepting of that. She said, well, why can't you just stay over? My parents don't mind. Just." Stay for dinner, you don't have to. And because <laughs> I was getting so annoyed at her being so just like, ugh, having her grip on me, um, I said, babe, I have karate tomorrow. I just kept coming up with excuses, but really I was saying, can you like stop smothering me? <laughs> so that was the moment, okay? So don't need this prop anymore. The scene is actually from book four that I'm working on. In this scene, there is uh, Jacques' half-sister, who is gay. Um, the scene is, she's walking down the street, minding her own business, and she feels someone following her. So, she looks behind her and kind of recognizes who it is, but she had never met this woman that she was dating. It was a uh, a long distance relationship, and there wasn't there's was not much technology, by the way, in my books, but there was like enough com uh, advancement in technology that they can communicate. So the only uh, knowledge she had was a picture of her and a few letters and vo uh, voice calls and all the stuff that they had done. So she felt uh, uncomfortable. So she starts walking a little faster, 
and she sees Jacques at a fruit stand, fruit stand, and she says, "Can you help me? This woman <laughs> won't leave me alone." So he looks behind her and kind of recognizes her. I think it was from some uh, previous uh, detective case that he worked on. So he's like, "Okay, quickly, come into my car now." So she gets into the passenger seat. And right when she closes the door, her former lover, who was following her, was holding a knife to her. And then Jack books it. So that was it. That was the scene. The next scene that I worked on that incorporated um, my first girlfriend was uh, a fight between Boone and Shammy. It was resolved, so it wasn't... Uh, like a spitting image of, of something that I went through but it was inspired in terms of uh, intensity in the fights that I used to have with this woman I dated. So the scene is they're about to go to bed and at this point of the story they are worried parents. Okay, So they're both already riled up and uh, have this very tense and in and crazy energy in their relationship. Not in the sense that they're going to break up or anything it's just a tense moment in this time of the relationship. So she turns her nightlight off, she goes to bed, and he's facing the other way, and he's about to turn his uh, nightlight. But as he's reaching down, he sees, you know those those clear Tupperwares that have the, like, the foldable, like, like this? You can like snap it open and then put stuff in there. That's what, what was under the bed. So... In this is uh, spare sheets, and one of the spare sheets had blood soaked in it, and he was really puzzled by this. So he peels off the duvet, gets out of bed, and Shami turns back over to see what he's doing, and realizes what he's doing, and starts to kind of panic, and he cracks it open, pulls back the blood soaked sheets, and sees a dead dog inside that had been shot in the head and in the chest. So he looks at his his wife, Shami, and says, What the hell did you do? Like, are you crazy? You killed a dog? Why and why is it in here? Did did you want me to find it? Is is there some kind of like sick like lesson you're teaching me for trust or something? So she says, Well, look at his color before you his collar before you judge me. So he looks at the collar and sees that there was this uh, GPS tracker and uh, video recorder. So she says, we were being watched. I was just doing what I had to do to protect her family. So they start having this crazy fight. He says something about, you know, we have everyone in the family that's safe and sound. We are okay. We're protected. But So I'm not going to spoil too much of, of the fight any more than I have. But basically, the fight gets resolved. Uh, her actions get justified and he understands that and now he becomes the uh, overprotective and crazy parent for good reason so although that scenario is very different from the relationship that I was in in terms of my real life uh, that uh, chaos and, and confrontation inspired that um, that energy the third one it's not a scene, it's just a part of my relationship that inspired something in the through line of uh, Boone and Shami. So, like I've mentioned before, uh, her and I were both very innocent when we were learning the ropes for the first time when it came to being in a relationship. So, Boone was the more na uh, naive person that didn't understand feelings and didn't really register uh, what someone was feeling when he did something wrong because he didn't know that he did something wrong. So at the beginning of the relationship, which was in book two, I think, uh, they were outside of town in this outlandish wasteland under the control of a dark king, King Rave, if you haven't read the books yet. And she is certain of how she felt, uh, sorry, Shami is certain of how she felt about Boone and then became uncertain because he wasn't uh, acknowledging her emotions and her wanting 
a loving relationship with them, even though they were only teens. So when he realizes what she means to him, he starts showing that love finally because she was being very um, distant and, and had doubts about the relationship. So that scared him because he knew that he felt something. It just took him a while because he was a teenager and you know when you're a teen you don't really know anything. Especially when it comes to love. You think you know it, but you, you're so innocent still. You, you, you're at the age where you start to think that you know everything, but you don't know anything. You don't know anything if you're a teenager. And if you say that you do, haha, <laughs> you have a lot to learn. Life is going to hit you like a ton of bricks over and over again as you get older. Um, when they become adults, I didn't really incorporate much of uh, that first relationship. There is more things involved in that, but I won't uh, keep you too long. But I will say this, that scene where uh, the former lover of Boone, I'm uh, sorry, Shaq's half-sister follows her, that was also inspired by a romance scam that I was involved in. I don't know if I'm gonna make a video about that. I'm, I'm trying to be as cautious as possible of that situation that I was involved in it's 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 over and like I'm not like in trouble or anything but it's not something I'm quite ready to discuss I think that's it if anything else comes up if you guys want me to do a YouTube live anyone asking me more questions about that about this series of videos and my past relationships or whatever I'm totally okay with answering those questions. I'm just not really uh, thinking of everything right now. I, and I want to keep these videos succinct. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I know the next couple of videos I'll be doing is about my teeth and my scars. Because there's a couple stories involving uh, the structure of my teeth and some of the scars that I still have on my body. All right. Have a good day, and happy reading, and see you later.